time to do part two notes for mangroves. Make sure that you first went and took attendance, and then we shall learn about mangrove sex. I know how excited you guys are. Okay, so sorry about the dark glasses, but I thought I'd come outside to show you my very beautiful backyard. But my glasses are transitions, and I didn't think about that. But I can't take them off because I'm blind, and then I won't be able to read the notes I'm trying to teach you about. All right, mangrove anatomy and reproduction. So you are labeling your notes nice and ginormous for your poor blind teacher so that when you submit them to Schoology, when they are handwritten, yes, still handwritten, you can do it on paper, take a picture and submit that way. You can handwrite them in Notability and then submit them. Either way, you got to submit the notes to me. All right, remember that you can pause me at any time if I'm going too fast for you. All right, so let's talk about some mangrove adaptations. All mangroves have adapted to uh, live in the brackish water. And a lot of it has to deal with their root systems and having stability and being able to get, you know, the constant supply of carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange for photosynthesis to occur. So, so mangroves do not have to live in salt water. They can survive in fresh water, but they tolerate the salt water so much better and they outcompete all other plants. Why else would they live anywhere else? They have this spot all to themselves. All right, so there are five major adaptations that allow them to live in this brackish water. The first is called salt exclusion. And here, it has to deal with the roots. They have these super ultra filters that exclude salt. So it is extracted before it ever gets into the plant. Okay, so here you have, it's just like a blocker. And you can see that the sodium ions get in, but the chloride items do not. All right. The second adaptation, and this one is in a different part of the anatomy of the mangrove, is the leaf. Okay, and here we have salt secretion, where it is actually removing salt that did sneak in. Okay, and they can, they can remove the salt through pores in the roots and their leaves. So there's actually usually salt crystals that are on the leaves. And if we had got to go to kayak through the mangroves, I would have made you pick one and lick it. It's salty. And you would have been like, ew, Miss Madigan, nasty. All right, so honors, let's talk about this really quick. As the salt accumulates in the mangrove leaves throughout the lifetime of the salt, yes, it's secreting it, but it's not all going to get out, okay? Especially if it's depending on wind or rain to wash the salt away. So, there will be an increase in salt in the leaf as it grows from a bud to full maturity. Eventually, they will shed that leaf and that leaf becomes part of the detritus. They will grow new ones to take its place. All right, the third adaptation are lenticels. And the pores in the stems of the mangrove tree, you can see where they actually allow extra gas exchange between the tree and the air. Now, honors, you know that this is their kind of way of breathing. This is their exchange of carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen for our photosynthesis. Now, if you look, these are the little lenticels. There's these little dots right there. And if you've ever noticed them on other trees that grow in or near water, like say a cypress tree, you would not be crazy. It really does happen. All right, so then we have our pneumatophores and these you know from your research are on the black mangrove trees and these are the ones that grow straight up out of the ground it kind of looks like some crazy maze that you would not want to step in the wrong place of okay and the pneumatophores also have lenticels on their tips i tried to zoom in when i practiced this and it, it just didn't look pretty so i put the little diagram right there and voila you can see them there 
I imagine this picture, but maybe new metaphors and lenticels being erased, might show up on, say, a Socrative in the near future. Hint, hint, wink, wink, star underline. All right, and then, of course, they have those aerial roots, which are also sometimes called prop roots, and they do increase the stability of the tree, as well as give them added surface area for the photosynthesis to occur. Okay, now... Honors. One of the things about these prop roots is that they grow from the top down to the bottom. Most people, you know, most trees grow from the bottom to the top. It's really, really weird. But what you need to know is that they trap the sediment that moves with the tide and it will gradually build up soil and sand around it and it gives it some support and stabilizes it and it provides this beautiful little nursery habitat for the fish and the crustaceans to swim in and to hide from predators in during the high tide. Okay, all right, let me tell you about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. Let me tell you about love. I know, I know. All right, so actually most mangrove trees are hermaphroditic and pollen um, will be carried from one insect or a bird and a bee and a small insect or moth or bats from one flower to the next. And so technically it is sexual reproduction, but it couldn't happen without the birds and the bees. Aw, aw, how sweet. All right, so then you have this little baby seed that starts to develop and germinate while still attached to the parent tree. And each propagule looks a little different. And you know this because you did your research, right? Because you know that's a red mangrove and that's a buttonwood, although they don't look like buttons to me. But hey, you know, to each his own. Okay, now... This is a little different than some other types of plants. So as germination takes place, usually, um, you know, say an orange tree or an apple tree, it, it falls off and it's carried away by some kind of animal and the seed gets pooped out and it grows wherever it landed. So it's not competing with the parent tree. Now here we still don't want competition with the parent tree but germination now takes place. The embryo remains attached to the tree and it turns into this cute little baby mangrove before it drops off. Now, these propagules are super nutrient rich and they can float for a long time and it actually allows them to survive until they settle into a suitable location where they can thrive and survive without competing with mama plant for nutrients and sunlight, okay? Now, hint, hint, wink, wink, star on a line example quiz question might be, what would disperse the propagules away from the mangrove parent? And you would tell me the tides and the currents. All right, and then once they settle in, they start to begin to grow in these cute little saplings and they will reach the age of reproductive maturity at a year and a half old. Thank you, Lord, that that is not the way that humans work because my daughter is a little over a year and a half and that's just not okay. All right, so let's refresh. We go back. We summarize. Pollination because of the birds and the bees. All right, then the propagule will have to grow uh, to maturity and then drop off the maternal plant. It will float horizontally in the beginning and then it will change to vertically when it's about ready to settle down, when it's used up some of its nutrients. The tides and the currents will move it around and then rooting and growth will begin. Okay, now this word should look familiar. Okay, because mangroves have these little mini baby mangroves that grow while they're still attached to the mama mangrove, they are considered viviparous. You remember what that means because we studied sharks and we know all about that. Viviparous is like live birth, okay? So here it's reproducing from buds that form from little plantlets that are still attached to the parent plant, okay? Now, 
this does give it an evolutionary advantage because while it's still attached to the mama tree, it's giving it a higher chance of survival because it's already begun to grow. All right, so it could hypothetically fall straight when the tide's not there and it gets stuck in the mud and then yes, it is competing for nutrients with the parent tree, but quite often they are moved away from the parents during a tide or current. All right, and the last thing is what the mangrove saplings have to deal with. So again, you're gonna have your varying salinities of the brackish water, depending on where they settle. Gonna have a lot of frequent flooding in intertidal habitats, areas where the tide comes in and the tide goes out. And then of course, see all these little saplings right next to each other? They're not all gonna make it. Some of them are going to be better suited to get more sunlight and better nutrients than others. So you can tell some of them are doing a little bit better than others. Like this poor guy, I don't know. I don't think he's gonna make it. Okay, so that is it. That is Mangrove Notes Part Two. So make sure that you submit it to Schoology. All right, I miss you. Part three is coming up soon. All right, see you later.